Throughout the next few videos in this mini series, I'll show you how to create an advanced race system for your Roblox game. This system will prompt each player to join the race. The player with the most speed will win and be rewarded. This system is brilliant for any game which involves increasing player speed, such as a speed simulator. I will be assuming you have your own speed system before watching this video. Check out my speed simulator series if not. Today we'll get everything set up and make a prompt that the user can press join or dismiss which we will program in the next video to send them to the race. Before we start scripting let's create everything we're going to need for this episode inside replicated storage, add a folder and just rename it to race system. We'll come back to this folder later but this is where we'll have all, our, all of our server and client uh, events, module script, everything that will run on the server and the client. Everything else in this replicated storage you can ignore, this is just from my speed simulator game, you don't need to worry about any of this here. Now inside starter GUI I'm going to add in a screen GUI which I'm going to rename race GUI. Inside this GUI, I'm going to add in a frame, and this will sort of be the background frame. So I will call it background. I'm going to give it a nice blue color. I think 0, 110, 255 will be fairly nice. So I'm actually going to position this manually. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I'd recommend playing around. It's only because I've already made a uh, GUI that I sort of know how I want it all to look. So play around with it and get it how you like, but I'm going to do 0 0.361, 0. 0 0.0670 and then for the size I'm going to do 0 0.2770 and 0 0.1580 and that is actually a bit too tall so I'm just going to bring the height down a little bit now I'm going to add a UI corner into this just to sort of fancy up a bit I'm sort of going to speed through the GUI just because I'm assuming you know how to make it if not I do have a little mini series on GUI just going into the very basics of it you can find the link to that series in the description. Now I'm going to add in a text button. And this text button will be our dismiss button. So dismiss button. I'm going to set the color to like a sort of salmon-y pink red color. 255-8989. And I will change the position to 0 0.497. 0, 0 0.43. 0. Actually I'm going to... Change the size first and then change the position because I do want to adjust it a little bit. I'll right, 0 0.50, 0 0.570. And I'm going to lower it below the actual blue background here. And you'll see why we do that in a couple of videos time. But basically, when we get rid of the buttons, we're still going to use this background to display how long's left of the current race. So if you've got the buttons, there's just going to be a massive gap below the text. You will see what I mean in a few videos time. But what I'm going to do is put the buttons below the blue background. And to make the text white, I'll make it say, uh, make it Fredoka 1. That is sort of my favorite font at the minute. And just scale it up. Well, I'll probably set the size to 25 or maybe 30, 36. But you can use text scaled if you would like. In fact, I will use text scaled and that will look fine. There we go. I've just added a, another... UI corner with a 0 0.30 corner radius on here. Just lower it, make sure it is below the UI. There we go. And now I'm going to duplicate this dismiss button and I will rename it to join button. I'm using BTN for short, same thing. And this join button, I'll make it a nice green color. So 80, 255, and 95. I will make the text say join. And I'm just going to position it next to the dismiss button, just like this. There we go. What I'm going to also do is go down to the text stroke transparency and change it to zero on both the dismiss button and the join button, just so the text stand out a little bit more. Now inside the background again, we want to add a text label. I'll rename this to header, and this will basically say how long until the race starts. It won't be our timer, but it'll say the race is starting in, blah, blah, blah. So this text, I'll make the background transparency 1, position V0000, and the size, I'll make 1, 0, 0 0.2230. And that is a little bit too small, so I'll go a little bit bigger on that. I'll just make the text say race starting in. I'll make the text white, and I'll scale it up again. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this header, rename it to timer, and this will be our timer text. So we can drag it down and this will take up the remaining area. And this will just be our timer. So for now, I'll just say 1 minute 59. I don't know how long our timer will be. 
I'll just make it 1 minute 59. There we go. So once you're happy with how your GUI looks, we can grab the race GUI and place it inside of our race system in replicated storage. And we will come back to this another time. What we will basically do is duplicate this race system and put it inside of each player. But we're going to do that through script. So under server script service, let's add a script, which I'm going to rename race system. This is where we'll handle most of the system. Ignore all the other scripts I've got in this project. Again, that's just from my speed simulator. I've got a data store. I've got a method to increase speed leader stats, which will be important. So the leader stat that I've got that I will be adjusting later in the series is gems here. Just a in value named gems. And so when the player completes the race, first place is going to get 500 gems. Second will get 250 and third place will get 100 gems. So that is maybe you might want to add that. Obviously, if you have your own currency, you want to increase that. So first, we need to get the replicated storage service and just we'll store it in a variable so for easy access. So replicated storage is game colon on get service replicated storage just like this. And we'll also do the same for the player service. So players is game colon on get service players. It's always good practice to get services right at the top of your script just so you can access them wherever you need them. Next, let's get our race system folder in replicated storage because we are going to access that a lot. So race system is replicated storage, kind of wait for child race system. So this will wait for the race system folder to exist. Now let's get the race GUI because we're going to want to spawn that inside of each player. So I'll just say race GUI is race system, kind of wait for child race GUI. And again, just waiting for the race GUI to exist. Now we're going to need to create two more variables for the GUI. GUI shown, which will be a boolean, by default will be set to false. And this just tells the, the script, has the GUI been shown to each player yet or not? If it's true, it has. If it's false, it hasn't. We will come back to this in just a minute and you'll see why it's important. We'll also create a GUI clones and this will be equal to an empty table. And what we'll do is when we create a GUI clone, we will put each clone inside this table so we can easily remove them from the player later on. All right, now at the bottom of the script, every second, so we're going to do a while wait one do loop. So every second we're going to worry about handling stuff related to the game. It makes sense because if our timer is going to tick down every second, it makes sense to do everything else every second as well. We don't want to do it loads because we don't want to slow the server down. Just every second, all we're going to do is check if the GUI has been shown. If it hasn't, we're going to show it. That's it for now. While wait one do, if GUI shown is false, then, so if the GUI has not been shown, we'll set GUI shown to true because we are now showing the GUI. And then we're going to call a new function called spawn GUI, which we'll create in just a second. And this will show the GUI. So just to recap this again, every second we're going to check if the GUI has been shown. If it hasn't, then we're going to set the variable to true so it doesn't run this check anymore. And then we'll spawn the GUI in. You're probably thinking this is quite inefficient. Why are we checking this every second? It makes sense just to check it once and then maybe have its own function. Well, the reason for this is because later on it, throughout this mini series, we are going to be using this for a lot more than just checking the GUI. We're going to be handling all our timers. I think we'll have three different timers and we'll be handling it all within here. There won't be so much that is going to be really demanding, but we're just going to keep all the necessary stuff and it will be a bit longer than this. So it's just best practice to get it in early because we will be moving it here anyway in the future. So it makes sense just to do it right from the start. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's create our spawn UI function. So any code has to be above the while wait loop. If it's below the loop, so say we had some code down here, this will not run because this will be looping forever. This will never stop looping unless we break out of it. So this code will never run. So any functions, any code has to go above the while wait loop. So just above it, I'm going to say function spawn GUI. And in here, we need to loop through every single player in the game, clone the GUI, put the clone inside the player GUI and then add it to the table. It's a lot easier to do than it sounds. Or underscore from a player in pairs players colon get players. Do just like this. 
So this will loop through every single player in the game. Underscore we don't need, it's just the index in the table of the player we're currently looking at. And player is the current player. So get players will just return a table of all the players in the game. So this will just loop through every single player. And player is the current player we're looking at in the loop. Local GUI clone equals race GUI colon clone. So this creates a copy of the GUI. Now we need to set the parent of this copy to the player GUI. So we need to basically put the copy inside the player's GUI so they can see it. GUI clone, not clones, but clone, because remember clones is our table. We just want the clone, the singular clone. Dot parent equals player dot player GUI. And this will put it inside each player's player GUI, which is where their GUI is displayed to them. And then we need to insert it and add it to the clone table. So table dot insert. And then we want the table to add it to, which is GUI clones. And we're going to insert the GUI clone. So the table to insert into and the item we want to insert. So this should now work, hopefully. The only other thing I'm going to do is just add a wait 10 seconds here. And the reason for this is because when I test it on a local server, which you'll see in a minute, it's going to take a little while between the clients loading and the server loading. If we just hit test and play, this will do it instantly but i want to test this with two players at the same time just to make sure the gui does show for everyone and so when i test it with a server it's going to the server will load before the clients do so just waiting 10 just make sure everything has time to load in if you're loading the more players you're loading or the slower your machine is you want to increase this if it's going to take two if you know it takes two minutes for your roblox studio to load i would maybe make this three or four minutes just to guarantee that everything's loaded Otherwise, nothing will work. So I'm just going to add wait 10 for safety. If we now hit test, I've got local server here, two players, and hit start. And once you've hit start, you'll get two players loading up, two clients, and you'll also get a server tab. We're not interested in that too much, but that is where you'll find your errors. So I'll just do a quick guide through this. As we can see, the GUI has popped up on both players' screen, which is perfect. So that's exactly what we want. So we know it's working. The join and dismiss buttons don't do anything right now, but we'll get into them at next video. The timer doesn't count down either, but again, we'll get onto that in the next episode. What we can do is go to view and hit output, which is this little like terminal button here with the arrow. We hit that, we get the output on the client. So if nothing's working, if it's not working for you, click the output, go in this output window and look for any red errors. This is unrelated, clear that. Look for any red errors. If you don't have any, nothing's wrong on the client. Try it on the other client. Again, nothing important in is it must all be working. If if it's still not working and you've got no errors on the client, go into your server window, which is this one just here. It's got this sort of green border around the game, and it will also say pause physics or stuff like that. This is the server. Again, enable the output and check if you've got any red errors. You're more likely to have red errors in the server output than the client outputs because we've only done server code in this video so it wouldn't make too much sense to have any client errors but worth checking everything if you've got no red errors then just make sure that all your code matches mine perfectly because it's going to be quite advanced so it's just one of those where you've got to follow along very carefully so if you've got no errors and you're not really sure why it's not working, or even if you have an error but you just don't understand, you can ask comment, uh, leave comments in the description, and I'll try to reply to as many as I can. Join our Discord server, where we're trying to build a community of future game developers. You can ask for programming help, help others, or just chat there too. Uh, or just, I recommend re-watching the video very, very carefully, and just making sure it all works, and all matches up to my code exactly. And make sure you're naming things very carefully and correctly as well capitalization is very important but that's it for this video i just want to keep these short as there will be a lot of code throughout this mini series the next video should be out four days after this one so make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you never miss an upload thanks for watching and goodbye